Hi, and welcome to Get Your Sheets Together, where we are going to learn tips and tricks that you can use with Google Sheets. My name is Liz Gray, and I'm the post-secondary education coordinator, which is just a long, fancy way of saying that I support our alumni after they graduate high school. And whatever they want to do, college, career, military, we are here. We have the To and Through Success Center that provides help with FAFSA, scholarships, job applications, resumes, just support if they need someone to go up to OC with them, whatever it is, we're here for them for up to six years after graduation. And I have also been a Techie Tribe ambassador since 2019. Um, before taking this position a little over a year ago, I taught AVID for four years at Odessa Collegiate Academy. And before that, I taught fifth grade at Hayes. The agenda today, we are going to walk through beginning a new sheet that's starting from scratch, but also from Microsoft Excel. Because I know some are, you know, taking the leap from Microsoft to Google, but I'm also going to show you how you can download from The agenda today, we are going to talk about how to begin a new sheet. We are going to go over the basics of Google Sheets. We're going to customize our spreadsheet, and then I'm going to share some awesome resources I'm so excited to share with you. Okay, brand new sheets, beginner steps and sheets. First and foremost, I'm not sure if everyone knows or not, but it doesn't matter if you begin with an Excel spreadsheet, you can convert it to sheets and vice versa. So I know that there it's just preference wise. Some prefer Microsoft, some prefer Google. I am team Google, but I will show you how to do both. OK. So I'm going to open a new tab and go into the waffle. So from here. I'm going to show you two ways that you can begin a brand new spreadsheet. You can either go into your drive first, or you can click where it says sheets and it will take you to this landing page. You can choose to open a brand new spreadsheet that's completely blank. There's some templates here. You can go into the template gallery and there's a whole bunch more awesome stuff. And then right here is just some sheets that you have recently opened. So just for this training, we're going to click start a new spreadsheet. Boom, there's your spreadsheet. Okay. The other way that you can do it is I'm going to close that tab, open a new tab, go to our waffle and go to your drive. From here, you can come up to where it says new and choose sheets and it will take you to the blank spreadsheet. Okay. Now something else I want to show you is how you can convert from Excel to sheets. So I'm going to show you how you can quickly upload an, an excuse me, an Excel sheet from your computer into your Google Drive. So I already have my Google Drive open. I'm going to open my file explorer and here is the Excel spreadsheet that I want. You're just going to click, sorry, make sure it's selected. And you're going to click and drag it into your Google Drive. When you see that blue square in your Google Drive and it says copy right underneath the icon, just drop it there. It does Google magic and now my Excel spreadsheet is in my Google Drive. So I'm going to come down here and you see the X there, that is my Excel sheet. So I'm going to double click that. It's going to open the Excel spreadsheet in Google Sheets. And you can tell that it is still in the Microsoft Excel format, okay? So if you're working in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet in that format, the original format, but you want to convert it into Google Sheets. That's what I prefer to do. It just makes sense in my brain that if I'm working in Google Sheets that my document should be a Google Sheet. So, but it's completely up to you. You can edit it while it's in this Excel format, 
but I'm going to show you how to convert into the Google Sheets format. So when you have your Excel open, you're going to come over to File and Save as Google Sheets. It's going to do what I call Google Magic, and now it is a Google Sheet. And when we go back to my drive, there's just a copy of the spreadsheet. One has the X for Excel, and then one has, I'm not sure what this is, but that is the Google Sheets logo. So just FYI. So remember that if you see that this is here and you mouse over it and it says Microsoft Excel, this is just the, the Excel format. So let me click off of that. So this is my Google Sheets format, and I'm going to now show you how you can download it back into Excel. So when you have any Google Sheet open, you can come up to File, Download, and the two options that I use that I actually know what they mean is Microsoft Excel and then PDF. So if you choose Microsoft Excel, again, it does some Google Magic, Microsoft Magic, whatever you want to call it. And when I open this, it is now converted back into my Excel spreadsheet. So as promised, that is how you can open or convert things from Excel to Google or Sheets and then vice versa. Okay. So back to our presentation. Now we're going to show how to get started in Sheets. Just some basics. So I have here, I'm not sure about the cat. It was in the template and I thought it was cute. So I went and copy and pasted this straight from a Google training that I actually have linked later on. Uh, this is just a real quick um, this is just a cheat sheet with their icons and what they mean. So let me go back. Oh, I closed it. Sorry about that. So little techie tip, if you come up to your Google Chrome bar up here and right click, you can reopen close tab and it will open back what, whatever the last tab you had open. And you can do that as many times as you want, just an FYI. So I want to go back to my Google Sheet so that I can show you some of the buttons. So, oops. First, this shows you, this icon shows that you can move it in your Google Drive. So I'm going to go ahead and move it into a folder. Right now it's just in my drive. So the very first page you open to when you open your Google Drive. But I'm going to come down to Techie Tribe and I'm just going to click that folder and go to move. And it lets me know that it has been moved from my drive to Techie Tribe, just an FYI. And this little button just shows, just means that it's been saved to your Google Drive. Okay. If you want to share this spreadsheet, you can click share. You can type people's names if you would like. So I'm going to share this with my friend, Mrs. Cox. And when you do that, you can decide whether you want them to view it means they can't make any changes to it. They can just look at it. The commenter means that they can look at it, but leave comments. Maybe if you just want them to proofread it real quick, but not change anything that you have set, then you can do that. Or you can give them full editing access if you're working on something with somebody else and you want to work collaboratively. I'm just going to set it as view. You can select or deselect Notify people, that means it'll send them an email. Hey, Elizabeth Gray shared this spreadsheet with you. And then you can send it. Or if you don't want to directly share with somebody, but you want to give them the link, you can do it this way. So it is already defaulted to restrict to people within Ector County Independent School District, meaning they have to log into their ECISD.school account in order to access the link. I usually change that to anyone with the link, meaning if you share the link to somebody, it doesn't matter what, what Google account they are logged into, they can have access to it. 
but it's up to you. If you have it ECIC, that means, like I said, they have to use their ECIC.school account. Or if you do restricted, that means only the people that you directly share it with, like I just showed you with Mrs. Cox, then you would select that. If you only want a handful of people or one person to get it, you would do that. But I'm going to go ahead and click anyone with the link. I want them to be a viewer. I don't want them to comment on it. I don't want them to edit it. I just want them to look at it. Once you have all that set up, you're going to come up to copy link. And another techie tip, when you are sharing a link, I go ahead and uh, put it into the, I don't know what that's called, the bar up there. And you're going to delete everything from edit to the end. You're going to take that off and type copy. And go ahead and push enter. And you're going to copy this link and then share it that way. Whoever has this link where it says copy, when they go and copy and paste the link or click, click the link, whatever you want it to be, it will force them to make a copy, meaning they are going to have your spreadsheet, but it's going to be theirs saved into their Google Drive. Um, I do this if I'm sharing templates or like I created an activity and I want my team to have it, but I want them to customize it for them and their students, then I do it this way. So just a techie tip. So let me go ahead and close all that and come back to here. This right here is undo, redo, print, paint format, which we're going to go into in just a moment. This is Zoom. So you can click right here and select, or you can type in a number. Um, if you're working just like Excel, you want the format in a currency, you have your option there, percentage, other formats. Here is where you can change your font font size, um, the different ways you want your font to look, text color, fill color if you want to fill in a cell, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. This is where you can choose what borders to see and not to see. This is where you can merge cells. I don't have more than one cell selected, so this is not an option yet. You can change the alignment of your cell where you want it to be vertically. You can choose an option for text wrapping. So you can have it overflow, wrap it, or clip it. Okay. You can change your text rotation. You can insert a link, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Insert comment. That's if you are having someone proofread it or working together. You could type in a comment. You can insert a chart, create a filter, look into your different filters and then your different functions here. We're not going to go into depth about this. Uh, that's a whole nother training and one that I would have to learn before I tried to teach y'all. So just, just FYI, but those are your basics. Okay. So next we're going to talk about customizing your sheet to make it work for you. I have a quote here from Gandalf. I just finished reading on Audible, um, so I guess listening, to the third Lord of the Rings book, so I'm done with the series. Um, but one quote that stood out to me is, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. So I'm hoping that with these tips and tricks I'm introducing you to, uh, possibly for the very first time, will give you more time that you can decide what to do with it and not have so much time that you have to spend on school stuff. So anyway, <laughs> back to our Google Sheets. So to customize it. So one way that I like to start off is changing the font. I'm not sure why, but you can click this square right here and it will select the entire spreadsheet. And I'm going to go ahead and change the font. Here lately I've been using News Cycle. It's pretty great. And it will change it for the entire document. If you want to just change certain cells, 
So I want to change the font size of this colored row. I'm going to just click into the first one and then hold down the button and drag it across until you have all the ones selected that you want to change. I'm going to change the font size to 12, but I also want to change the color because I don't like that. And that is one way that you can do that. So as you can see here, these little black arrows here, if you click that, that means there are some, where is it? Rows hidden. So I've unhidden them by clicking that button and I'm just going to delete that. I'm not sure why it did that. So if you want to do something to an entire row, you just right click it and here are all your options. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete that row and it will take it out completely. It changes the numbers here. So as you can see, there's more here. So I clicked it to unhide it. Oops. If you mess up, just do undo. <laughs> and I'm trying to resize it, but I'm not sure why. So I'm just gonna ignore it. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so now I want, I don't like how it says this on two lines. I want everything to be on one line. So I'm going to select the column. So I just left clicked it, but now I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to resize column. Um, if you're very techy and you know how to do pixels and things like that, you're more than welcome to. But I usually go to fit to data and push OK, and it's supposed to resize it <laughs> to the data that is inserted in there. But it did not, so I'm just going to select one side of the column and drag it out until it says home phone in one line. Probably the reason that it did not work is because these are not resized. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this box up here to select the entire spreadsheet. And that's not how you do it. So I'm gonna come back to, if you want, So I need to change these two columns to be just one line, just aesthetically pleasing to me. So if you want to select more than one column, select one column and then hold down control to select the other one and it will select those for you. So I'm going to left click it and resize selected columns and again, choose fit to data and And so now it's resized re it. I'm not sure why it didn't resize this second one. So just like we did for home phone, I'm just going to come up here and change that. To me, this looks good. We have everything one row, all that. I am going to go ahead and delete where it says student information. Um, just simply, we just simply don't need it. So I'm gonna left click and you can either hide it, like you don't want it to go away permanently, but you don't want to see it, you can click hide. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And now that I have that row deleted, I'm going to try again to resize this column to fit to data. And there we go. Just an FYI. <laughs> okay, so more customization that you can do is if you... Let's say I want to contact these people. So I'm going to type contact question mark, meaning have you contacted them? I'm going to push enter and that is my brand new column. Now, as you can see, they are formatted differently, but I want it to match all these other main titles. So I'm going to select one and come up to format painter, or sorry, <laughs> paint format. And when you have the one that you want to copy selected, you're going to push that paint roller and then click the one you want to copy it to. And it will give you 
a replica of the formatting there. Um, it did not change the resizing because we had not done it for that column. And as you can see, these are all caps and this is not, so we'll fix that in just a moment. So I'm going to right click, resize column, fit to data. Okay, still didn't work, so I'm just gonna resize it. <laughs> I'm not real sure what's going on there. Okay, so now I want to insert check boxes so that I can easily show if I have contacted these students. So I'm going to select where I want my check boxes and we're going to come up to insert. So we're going to come up to insert and scroll down to checkbox and it will automatically put checkboxes there. If you don't know the magic of checkboxes, let me show you. So I just got off the phone with Brianna Bear. So I'm just going to click into that box and now I show that I have contacted them. If I did that by accident and I'd actually talked to Gabriel Apple, I will just deselect that and choose the correct one. If you're like me and it bothers you that the checks, check boxes are gray when everything else is black, you can just select those check boxes and come up and change the font color to black and it will do that as well. Just FYI. Some other ways that you can customize your sheet, you can come up to format and go to theme and you can choose your color theme, whatever you would like to use. So I'm going to click this one it will automatically change when I do have colored it'll will change it to that theme just an FYI or you can customize it and go through and change the font you can change what each color is it's up to you when you're done with that you can just exit out okay so back to our check boxes um, the rest of our spreadsheet has the borders but these do not. So when you have those selected, you just come up to borders and you get to decide and click which borders you want to show, the border color, and then the border style. So we want it to match these other ones. So we just want to select that shows it's going to show all the borders and then it matches all the other ones. Okay. There's lots of ways to customize your Google Sheets and I have prepared some examples that I have used in the past. So I just wanna show you some other ways that you can customize it to work to your advantage. So the first one, um, I would use this for our seniors at OCA just to track their scholarships. So this is a Google Sheet that I created from a blank spreadsheet i have their names hidden and a way that you can hide a column is you'll come up and just right click and go to hide column and then to unhide it you just click the little black thing <laughs> or do undo <laughs> okay so the way that i have this set up uh, let me zoom out again this is zoom so you can come in and zoom out so I have all of their names hidden, of course, but once they completed their FAFSA, they would come in and check off that they had it completed. I had this shared with them in our Google Classroom and I gave them all editing rights. Um, the goal was that they would, every time they got a scholarship, they'd come in and update the spreadsheet. Um, excuse me. So the way that I had it set up is I have their total column here. I had them type in where they received the scholarship, how much it was. And then I had, I came up and used the functions here, sum, average, count, things like that, to actually 
have it every time they would put a total here under amount, it would actually update the total here. So for example, let me use this one that had zero. So say they got a scholarship from UTPP for $5,000. It would automatically update the total here. And let's say they got another one from OC for 2,500. It would automatically update there. If you want um, more information on how I set this up, I will do that for you. I'm not going to go into detail here, but the content, my contact information is at the end of this presentation and I would love to share it with you. Um, so I had all of this ready for them. And then at the very, very bottom, I had it sum up the total here. So the last that this was updated, the scholarships for class of 2021 for OCA was this much, which is pretty awesome. Um, just FYI. And you can change the, the colors of everything and it's just amazing. I love it. So let me close that. Um, here is a student that got really behind on her assignments. So we did some one-on-one -on -one advising and I just went through, she was taking college classes at Odessa College um, while a student at OCA. So we went to her Blackboard, which is their L LMS. And I just listed all the work that she was supposed to do and then added check boxes. So when she got done, she could click into it. And then she went ahead and added the date that she completed it. And I just color coded it by each class. Here's her, her chemistry. She was really behind. Uh, U.S. history, AVID, art, all that. So this is one way that you can help students maybe and have them keep track of their work. So to kind of build off of that, I had also shared this with all the teachers at OCA. And this was a spreadsheet that I created. Um, let me hide this so you can actually see. Um, so this is a spreadsheet that I had them, while I was teaching them, they would come in and change these tabs and they could either change it from, or change it to the class name. So at first period they had AVID. To change the name, you just double click it and they can Type in whatever it is, okay? And then push enter and it changes that. So let me crack that up because this is a template that anybody can use. Uh, but I went ahead and put in the instructions so that the teachers and students knew how to use this. The idea when I created it was they put the date given, what the assignment was, when it's due, and then they can check off when they got done. If it's undone, but they have questions for the teacher, they could type it there so that when they go to their first period class, like, oh yeah, for assignment 3.2, I had this question. So not a lot of students used it, but it was something that worked for my brain. Uh, but while we're talking about customizing the tabs here, you can click the arrow here and you can duplicate it, copy it to, you can change the color of the tab and it shows there. And then when it's off of it, it stays there. So it's just, just an FYI. Um, so let me go ahead and close that. Some other ways that I have seen Google Sheets be used is actually for fun activities. This is paint by numbers. So this is an actual thing that I, I probably got off of teacher pay teacher, to be honest but you could just have the students come in and paint each cell. So if you go to final product, this is what it looks like afterwards. So if, I'm sure there was an explanation sheet <laughs> that is somewhere in my Google Drive, but you could have a legend here. So for all the ones, you could paint it whatever color orange or whatever. And then when they get done, this is what it looks like. So just FYI. Another fun thing that I found when I was looking for spreadsheets is this one is called Battle Sheets, and this tells you exactly how to play it. It is from Control Alt Achieve, which is he's actually one of my resources that I'm going to share later. It tells you step by step how to do it. It has player one and player two, so you can have the students play Battle Sheets. 
Um, another template that I had in my Google Drive is a year at a glance. This is for school year 1920, but you could definitely change it to any school year. And <coughs> excuse me, this is a way maybe if you're doing your yearly planning or whatever, then you can come in and just type in whatever you want to use. And if you want any of these templates, just let me know and I will share them with you. I love sharing. Uh, here is another option that I have used Google Sheets for is a senior year checklist. Uh, when I was teaching AVID at OCA, I did have all the seniors, so I tried to give them all the resources I could for them because senioritis is hard. So the way that I did this each month, I had a different color and then I inserted the checklist. So when they got done with something, like they, we had them do uh, top 10 colleges, narrow it down to the top three and five. When they got done, they could click that. And again, this was shared through Google Drive and they were able to um, use it on their own. Another thing that I would have them do is keep track of their senior data, which is something that Avid has to do um, for all their Avid seniors. And you could come in and just input the information. Again, with the checklist, just click into it and keep track of whatever you're working on. So just an FYI, there are so many options on how to customize your Google Sheets. I just wanted to give you some, some insight. If you go to Teacher Pay Teacher, you can look up just Google Sheet stuff and there are so many options. It's amazing. So back to my presentation. So now I want to share some resources aside from the templates I just showed you. Again, if you want that, just let me know. Control Alt Achieve. I just mentioned he's the one that had battle sheets. I linked this page and it's all Google Sheets resources. He has the general add-ons you can use. If you want to use it for different content areas, here's art, language arts, math, and there's the the links for each of them. It's just, his stuff is so good. And if you follow him on Twitter, or if you don't follow him on Twitter, I suggest you do. Um, this is him. He's amazing. Just FYI. He shares stuff all the time. Another resource I wanted to share with you is this Google Workspace Learning Center. When I was doing research for this presentation, I found this and I thought it was great. And this is where I found the uh, cheat sheet as well. So this has all this stuff that I just covered. So if you want to learn more about switching to sheets from Microsoft Excel, you can click that and it walks you through that. Getting started with sheets. I did go through this and it was pretty great. So you can just go through and do some self-paced PD. Oh, it's so good. And the last one is get started with Google Sheets. This is from Google for Education. So this breaks it down for you in very easy, easily managed chunks. And there's videos. It's about accessing, creating, sorting, filtering data, which I didn't even go into. And I just recently learned how to do it. It's a, oh, I love it. Uh, editing, creating charts and graphs, which I also didn't mention, and then start sharing a Google Sheet. So this was a great resource too. So I wanted to share that with you. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> so let's review. The things we talked about was conversions. Microsoft and Google can work together and be friends. We talked about the basics of Google Sheets, taking those baby steps, just you know, tiptoeing in. Uh, hopefully I was able to show you some ways that you can customize your spreadsheet to make it work for you. I shared some resources that I hope are helpful. And then now you have your sheets together so you can go and conquer the world. That's all you needed was this training, just FYI. <laughs> so thank you. Here's my contact information. It's elizabeth.gray at ecic.school. I do go by Liz, but in the system, I'm Elizabeth. Here's my office number, 456-5234. Um, and I... And I say I'm active on Twitter, but really it's just me retweeting stuff. But I do get on it daily to check it. But I'm at Mrs. Liz Gray, just FYI. 
And the credits for this spreadsheet, if you don't know Slides Mania, it's amazing. But it's linked there. Go here. She uploads all this stuff for free. And there's so many templates. It's amazing. And you just go through and close the ad. When you go into one that you like, you actually have the option to download it in PowerPoint or Google Slides. Just another techie trip. Tip, sorry. So if you have any questions, again, here's my contact information. If you want any of the spreadsheets that I showed you, let me know and I will send you a copy of one. If you have any further questions, reach out to, of course, your Techie Tribe or you can reach out to me directly. I appreciate it. Thank you.